Okay. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> I'm going to wait a few minutes, or I should say a few seconds, before I get started. It's been quite a while since I've done a live video, so I'm excited about it. Today, I'm going to be sharing on some revelation that I got the other day as I'm working on my book, uh, Communion, The Supernatural Power of Communion. Uh, for health, prosperity, life, for all that. So I've been working on the, my book, and I've been, I've been studying a lot on it. It's just like almost two years I've been working on this book. This is like the hardest and the longest book I've ever worked on, but it has the most revelation. And uh, yesterday I was uh, studying and thinking about this, and I think it's really important. Something, all the stuff going on in the world today, it's really hard to have peace. And this is something that really will give you peace once you grasp onto it. And this is something that's going to be in my new book. I kind of condensed and put a couple chapters, pieces from different chapters together so that I could share with you something simple about how to take captive uh, your thoughts and bring them to the obedience of Christ and bring that to the communion table, which this information was life-changing for me, and I'm still growing in this. That's why I'm writing that book on communion and why it's taking so long. But um, basically, 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, Cast down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Okay, now we know that's true, and most of us are taught when we have a bad thought to take it captive and say, Okay, um... Like, for example, the thought comes, you start, you wake up, you feel really miserable, really uh, terrible, you have a sore throat. So the first thought is, oh, I'm getting the flu because the flu is going around. So the first thought is, I'm getting the flu. Then the devil, what he does is he takes you through his little flip chart. Like This is notes I still have to do with my books, but through a flip chart. Like, oh, okay, look at here. Um, you were at uh, Cracker Barrel the other day, and that waitress was sneezing and snotting all over her. So, you know, you deserve to have the flu. You should have the flu. And, oh, look here. Um, your Aunt Susie, you know, you just visited her the other day. She just died of the flu. Oh, oh, and you heard on TV, take this medicine and it'll do better with the flu. And, oh, look here. Whoops. <laughs> here are the symptoms of the flu. So what the devil does is he uses your unconscious mind and the neural pathways that you have already created of things that have happened in your history, things that you have seen, things that you have experienced, uh, things that you have heard. So that's why testimonies, you have to really watch when you give a testimony because when you start giving details of in a testimony, it starts making that available to everybody else. And then when they have a symptom, they're going to start thinking that. That's why I stopped watching TV 20 years ago. I just rent movies. And that's it, because I don't want any suggesting to me. And TV is all about suggesting. Big Pharma wants to get your money, so they tell you what symptoms to look for and what medicine to ask your doctor for. So anyway, so the devil, what he does is he goes through this flip chart, and he starts giving you all these thoughts, all these ideas, all these confirmations of why you deserve to have the flu. You deserve to have the flu because, well, you haven't been taking care of yourself. Um, you haven't exercised. You haven't been, you're even eating a lot of sugar. Uh, and you've been around people who have the flu, you went to Walmart, you put your hands in the cart, you came out to Walmart, you stuck your finger up your nose or in your mouth, you deserve to have the flu. Okay, so he's accusing you. Okay, he's taking your experiences, what you hear, see, uh, and experience, and he's taking those experiences and, and those pathways that you've already created, so it's like a trigger, like, oh no, I'm getting the flu. So you begin to think about the flu. You begin to think about the symptoms. You, you, you normally, if you're already a Christian, you would say, take the thought captive. Okay, uh, by the stripes of Jesus, I have been healed. So you quote that scripture. But I don't think that's what re really means taking it captive. What that's doing is quoting a scripture. Now, when you take the thought, it means... Okay, first of all, the devil is giving you symptoms and showing you things and saying, oh, this has got to be the flu because you did this, this, this. You deserve to have the flu. He's giving you a judgment, basically. And by taking it captive, what you have to do is you have to walk it to the cross. And this is so cool because we think just the opposite. Now, walking it to the cross means everything 
on this earth that leads to death is from the devil. Everything that leads to life is from God. So, so you take your thought and you take it all the way down the road to death. Okay. Oh my goodness. That's right. I did talk to Aunt Susie the other day and she has the flu. You're right. Oh yes, I got sneezed on in church. You're right. I, I could have the flu from that. Yeah, I stuck my finger up my nose after I was visited Walmart. Yeah, uh, you're right. I've been eating sugar. Yeah, you're right. I haven't been taking care of my body. Yeah, you're right. Okay, then you take that those thoughts. You follow all of those thoughts all the way to. It, it's like a mind map. Your thought is, I got the flu. I got these symptoms. So all the bad thoughts that you are thinking, oh no, I got the flu. I'm this age. It. So many statistics say that person people who have the flu die. Okay. Death. It ends in death. You take all those thoughts till they till they're dead. Till you end up in death. Death. Then you say, okay, now all those thoughts have been. I've thought about them. I brought them into my conscious mind because when they're unconscious, you can't deal with them. You bring them to your conscious mind. You walk them all the way to the cross. Now they end in death. And you say, okay, now Jesus justified me. See, the devil is giving you a judgment. He says, you deserve to have the flu because according to the cycles and the seasons on the earth, according to the fallen man and the nature of man, the cycle of death is you get germs, viruses, infections, and you get with somebody who has the flu, sneezes on you, you get the flu. That's the cycle. That's the death cycle on the earth. But you are not in the death cycle. So you say, okay, I don't receive that judgment. I bring it to the cross and Jesus, I died in Christ Jesus. I was buried, not just dead, but I was buried in Christ Jesus and I resurrected with Christ Jesus. Therefore, flu is in my history, not in my future because you are a new creation and sin leads to death. And sickness, disease, poverty, lack, and fear is all the result of sin, the judgment of sin from that the devil put on you. But Jesus already took that judgment. So sin, sickness, disease, poverty, lack, and fear, and everything related to death has no legal right on you. It's just like going to the courts of heaven. And in a way, you're going to the courts of heaven. If you understand about the courts of heaven, you confess and you admit your guilt. Yes, I'm guilty of that. Yes, I'm guilty of that. Yes, I'm guilty. I repented. I reply, apply the blood of Jesus to it. And taking captive your thought is just like going to the courts of heaven and you are admitting every of the, all these bad mind map, all these thoughts going in all the direction of why you should be sick or why you should be poor or why you should be divorced or why you should be whatever. All those thoughts that you take to the very end of those thoughts when there is nowhere else to go because they end in death. You bring those thoughts. You say, yep, you're right. You're right. But my justification is Jesus. His blood bought that health for me. His blood justified me. So you legally have no right to put sickness or disease on me. Okay. So you take it to the cross, you walk it to the cross, and it, it always ends in death, and then after the death, you go to the justification and the righteousness of God that you are. It doesn't matter that you did something stupid last night. It doesn't matter that you got the flu uh, because um, you slept with somebody last night, or you got the flu because you swore last night, or you got the flu because you smoked or got high last night. You are justified. The devil has absolutely no right to put that on you because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Not by your behavior, not by your actions, but by being in Christ Jesus. If you're in this water, everything that is in this water, it's all in it. Okay, you're in Christ Jesus. Okay, you're in him. So if he's righteous, you're righteous. You're in him, he's in you. Okay, okay, so moving on. Um, so, so there you are justified because you're a dead man. You're in Christ Jesus. You're raised up in Christ Jesus. All things have become new and a uh, dead man can't get any debtor. Okay. That's your past. Jesus is your future. Your life is in him. So you judge everything until it comes to the death and then you come to your justification. Now, let's look at how that relates to communion. Okay. Um, 
communion. Okay. Um, in the Old Testament, the blood covered your sins. But it also um, covered the sins that were created in ignorance. Okay. Which is, um, let's see, where is that? But into the second part, the high priest alone went once a year, not without blood, which he offered for himself, and the sins of the people committed in ignorance. Okay? So that meant that even though what happened to the people whose sins were committed on purpose, and what happened to their conscience, they're, they're, see, when you commit a sin, say you're, say you're um, I don't know, smoking, a, 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 committing adultery or something, um, excuse me, say you're, com sorry, I should have held the hand over the mic here. Um, if you were committing a sin, let's say if you were committing adultery, okay, now in the olden days, let's say that the, the goat was sacrificed because of your sin. Actually, you would be stoned, but let's say, uh, uh, maybe that's not a good example because you would have been stoned. But let's say you did, you broke one of the Ten Commandments that the Jews had in the Old Covenant. Ten Commandments were for the Jews, okay. Um, Let's say you broke one of the Ten Commandments that the Jews had. So, um, you would go and offer a goat or a dove, whatever it called for. But you still would have a guilty conscience. You would still say, oh God, I'm so sorry. I'm so worthless because I committed that sin. You know, you still would have that guilty conscience. Now, what happens is that guilty conscience, every sickness and disease is in our body. And all the history of our ancestors' sicknesses and diseases, all that history is in our body and our DNA. And when we go through trauma or we go through strong emotions, they open up, they unzip the DNA, they unzip that sickness, that disease, and pull it out and give it to you. It's like your body is paying, paying for sin, unconscious sin that you feel guilty for, unconsciously even. Okay, so it's there, but and you're feeling guilty. So that brings out sicknesses and diseases is emotions and hate and anger and guilt and shame and condemnation and all that stuff. So what Jesus did in the New Covenant, um, in Hebrews 9, 4, uh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience, okay? And then it goes on to say in 1 John 3, 22, Beloved, if your heart does not condemn you you have confidence toward God and you can have what you ask you're asking to be healed you want to receive the healing that is blood paid for that is legally yours but your conscience is guilty so you bring it under the blood of Jesus I love this this is so awesome okay so you bring it under the blood of Jesus you, you take capture that thought through all those steps until you're justified because you're in Christ Jesus and you take communion Communion has so much life in it, so much power in it. Communion is awesome. I love communion. I love learning about communion. This has been a whole new thing for these last two years, learning about communion. And I am learning so much. It's like my brain, my brain's going tilt. You know, I'm just like going like this. I feel like I'm a hyperactive kid because I have so much revelation on communion. And, and it's like I got to get into the words and into this book and, and out there so people's lives can be changed. Because Jesus, uh, God sent Jesus because Jesus was the answer to all things. And when you take communion, the body and the blood of Jesus, you are proclaiming legally that you are in, covered in the blood. You are, you are in Christ and he is dead, risen, and your punishment, your guilt, no longer guilty, has been taken care of. You are the righteousness of God. And communion does that for you. And I probably got off on a sidetrack. Okay, um, so all sicknesses first comes from your spirit, and then it manifests in your body, okay? Um, do research, do studying about all pharma's doing and what uh, about, um, I, I'm going to put it in my book. I, I just can't talk about all that now. <laughs> um, anyway, um, it, it manifests in your body because we carry in our DNA all the trauma, all the sicknesses and the diseases fr from our past ancestors. Um, that's why we have to go to the court. The, going to the court of heaven is one way to deal with it. There's different levels of revelation, different, uh, not even like this, it's like this. 
and some like this, you know, going to the courts of heaven, knowing who you are in Christ. And you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So um, you want to you want to get rid of that unconscious neural pathways of your history and triggers of things that have happened to you in the past. You want to get rid of trauma because trauma opens the door to sickness and disease. If you have any kind of major sickness in your life, the, when you got it diagnosed, look back six months to a year, what traumatic thing happened in your life? That's what triggered and opened that up for you and brought that on you. Now, um, when we come into judgment, saying judgment meaning, oh, um, you're, you got the flu because you didn't eat right, you didn't exercise, you didn't drink enough water, you uh, drank out of the same cla glass with somebody who had the flu. So you are being judged by the devil. So when you come into judgment like that, it means a trial, a contest, a sentence of condemnation, a damnatory judgment, condemnation, punishment, and accusation. That's why grace is so important to understand grace because all these things are what the world does to us and actually what Christians do to each other. And we shouldn't be because the devil's always judging us and making us guilty, shame, and condemnation. Guilt, shame, and condemnation bring us into all of this, cause sickness, disease, death, and poverty, lack, fear, all this stuff going on in the world. It causes this. So learn about grace. I have three books out there, I think, on grace. Learn about grace. I give away books free all the time. Anyway, um, okay, we have passed from death to life. Now, most people accept the cycles and the seasons that happen on the earth which are the death cycle and the fallen nature waiting for the sons of God to mature and to manifest and to judge and say, hey, you know, you're under me now. You don't, you're not weeds. You're not, you're not uh, killing bugs and insects. Um, you are healthy. You are a blessing to me. Okay. Earth is waiting for that because the earth is under death cycles and we have accepted it as normal. We accepted that aging is normal, that we should lose our eyesight we should get sicknesses and diseases and weak bones we just accepted that um when certain things happen certain th you know we have accepted this stuff okay but we have passed from the death cycle into the life cycle we have passed from um oh there's so different ways i could go with this oh <laughs> i get so excited um i can't go there either <laughs> Um, okay, so instead you want to receive the absolute, this is, this is what we received, okay? I told you what the death cycle was, this is the life cycle. Um, absolute fullness of life, life active and vigorous, that is abundant life. If you don't have that, you are in the death cycle. I said to God, I said, God, show me whenever my thoughts or my speech or my actions are in the death cycle and produce death. Uh, and then get help me to get onto life because what we do is we sit in front of a TV and we let the TV brainwash us and in really reality the TV is brainwashing us and things like Facebook and Instagram are created they mess up the neural pathways in your mind and cause you to go from one thing to the other they teach you not to hold your focus and attention on anything they also e emit uh, a blue light I think it is I don't know what kind of light that that uh, affects your melatonin so you can't sleep and your cortisone and different stuff like that so it puts you on high stress level now um my i have a book that too i want to show you real quick that will really uh help let me see where it is <laughs> i'll be right with you okay this book that i've written i'm going to go over this in a couple of weeks i'm going to go over this the toxics uh a toxicity of how the government and pharmaceutical and what they're doing to us but this talks a little bit about g5 uh, microwave all kinds of stuff uh, the elite the celebrities and stuff um it, it has just a touch of that stuff in but mostly what the water and the food and everything is doing to us so we have to get educated now you have to be careful because google automatically um and snoops too automatically will uh, are programmed to pull up stuff that they want to promote the left side the left you know far left 
instead of truth. So you have to keep digging and digging and digging deep to uh, learn about 5G and how it's killing us, how it'll affect your brain waves like microwave and holding the phone up to your ear. Um, instead, put it in your purse. Get one of those covers that I, I uh, promote for one of my uh, sponsors. If you're holding it to your ear instead, or get one of these things where you can speak. Just learn how uh, the... Um, the metal that they're putting in the air with the spraying with the airplanes uh they're releasing that chemical warfare the the the, the controlling weather harp and now we've learned i learned about project blue beam which is interesting where uh hologram um and and now also they're able to project thoughts into your mind voices into your head actually and i believe all of these uh gun active shooters have been um manipulated and brainwashed to do what they did that um by whoever, not the government, but some kind of whatever. And I believe, pray for Virginia because because Virginia's, they're trying to confiscate Virginia's guns. And so there's getting ready to happen a, um, a mass shooting or something with shooting. Some kind of big drama is getting ready to happen in Virginia right now because whenever um, they want us to get distracted, uh, stuff happens. So, um, Pray for Virginia because there's a possibility that there's going to be something happening there. Okay, so you bring it to the blood of Jesus. Now my nose itches because I'm talking too much, vibrating. Um, you bring it to the blood of Jesus and the blood speaks, okay? The Bible says that the blood speaks. What does the blood say? Hey, the blood says, as Jesus is what I paid for this person not to get the flu. You cannot put the flu on them. I paid for it. I bought it. I redeemed them. No. So that's basically what I wanted to go over with you. Um, get my book here, The Truth About Toxics in Your Food and Water. And, um, of course, it's gonna, it, it's, it's also called the, the Essential Oil Solution because one of the ways that you can be healthy, have health, and have alternative medicine and healing is through essential oils, herbs, mushrooms, spices, frequencies, light, and so on. And the government knows this, and so the FDA regulates what you can say. But I took all references out of, of this book of what essential oil company I use. Um, and, well, actually, it might have one in there. I have to take it out and get it in there, but it's, I think it's okay. <clears throat> so I can legally publish this book, and I can legally say... Um, what essential oils do and I can tell the truth about some stuff because there's n I'm not pointing you to uh, Enroll under me. It has my XYC oils.com um, If you want essential oils and the oil infused products and products That you can use safely to wash your dishes to wash your countertops to use wash your baby to wash your dogs to give your dogs when they're sick and so on so Contact me. Check out my website. My website, xycoils.com, has great testimonies of frankincense and some other oils. So anyway, um, this book is not just trying to get you to use oils to be healthy. It is also giving you truth. So even if you were use, even if you don't have oils or sell oils, um, this will open up people's eyes. My goal is to give two of these books away a day. I just ordered some of them, a box of them. And anybody who has a headache I come across or that complain I come across, I'm going to pray for them. And I say, look, here's why. Read this book and give this book to them. And then hopefully they will get interested in enrolling and getting toxic-free products to live with. Um, I just We just converted a bus into a schoolie. And on the schoolie, it's totally self-sufficient. It's going to have a, um, it has solar on it now. Solar we took from the house, so now we're on electric. Eh. Uh, the bus is on, all has all our solar on. It's going to have a rain catchment system and so on. It's going to have a little wood stove, a uh, little mini grizzly. And um, it's uh, totally independent. And on the bus, uh, we use we will be using all of the products that for the company that I have, that I use, that is toxic-free. Like it's um, dishwashing soap we can let go on the ground. And it's not bad. It's healthy for the ground, uh, uh, shampoo and soap and all that. So it's really exciting for me. So this all goes together mm -hmm. with teaching people how to be toxic-free, teaching them how to get healthy, not just 
um, spiritually, but physically and mentally. That's my goal is to teach people how to be healthy physically, mentally, and spiritually. And my regular website is robinbramer.net. So here comes my commercial. If you are an author, I publish family safe and Christian books. Uh, should turn this down. Uh, I publish family safe and Christian books for only $399. Personally, I have written over 50 books. So I have the experience. I have published another 100 or so of other people's books. Um, and I seem to deal with my niches, the supernatural Christian books, that people that walk in the manifest Son of God, the courts of heaven, seeing the hosts in the sky and that kind of stuff. So it's only $399. You know how much that costs normally? Anywhere from 500 the cheapest, some people, and uh, usually 1000 to $10,000. I mean, it's crazy. And um, I do it. I publish them because I've been there. I paid $2,000 to have mine done with a Christian publishing company, and they made me buy books, a bunch of books that I put in my garage, and I gave away. It was horrible. I had to jack the price up. It was worthless. But I had a dream since I was 13 years old to be an author, and now I'm a best-selling author of many books. Um, so I promote books. I publish books. So if you have something in your heart, get it out there, get it out, and... Uh, let me publish it. Let me promote it. Go to my site. If you are excited about being toxic free, if you are a missionary or a pastor and you want, you go overseas and you want to be healthy while you're overseas, um, or you want to make money as a missionary and at the same time educate people and teach them how to be healthy and toxic free, you want to enroll in um, Essential Oil Company. Contact me. Ask me about it uh, because you can help people like major big time uh, with this. I absolutely love my essential oil company that I uh, deal with. So that's all I want to share today. I want to ask you, please share this with your Facebook groups, your YouTube channels, um, social media sites, share it, comment. If you uh, go to my website, xycoils.com, will lead you to just one page of my website on essential oils and the testimonies. RobinBremer.net will lead you to the same website, but will lead you to publishing, of um, making audio books and Kindle books and promoting your book, uh, getting reviews for your book, and um, upgrading your Kindle um, description to make it look like Amazon is promoting you. So share this with your so social media site. Uh, uh, comment. If you want to talk to me personally, uh, you'll have to mention my name because these things get passed around. Thousands of people see them, and sometimes I don't get to look at the comments or answer them. And and I might just say like, but I actually would ha will read your comments and, and try to respond to those who had questions. So love you all. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask that this information that I just shared this uh, would become revelation in everybody's heart who watches it, whether they're live or they share it or have a watch party. Father, I pray that it would come alive, that they would get revelation about the blood and the, uh, the blood and the body of Jesus and how powerful it is and how it can give them everything they need for life and godliness. In Jesus' name, amen. So we will talk to you later. Remember to share.